Hello children, it's lovely that you've joined me again today. And the first thing we're going to do is to light our three candles. Just like we do at school. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's see our three candles. Put those over there for now. Right, now today I'm going to tell you about a man called, well he had two names. He was sometimes called Saul and sometimes he was called Paul. Now why that was is that Paul was a Roman and he was a Jew and his Roman name was Paul. But his name in Greek was Saul. Just a little bit like David. David in English is David and David in Welsh is David. So sometimes names are a little bit different in different countries and different languages. Now, in your Bible, you will find the story of Paul. First of all, he seems to be called Saul and then he, he seems to get known as Paul. And if you go to the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, and the next book, is the book of Acts and it's the story that I'm going to tell you is chapter 9 in the book of Acts. So you can see it's quite a long way through the book. So you go past the Gospels and the first book past the Gospels is the book of Acts. Now the book of Acts is the story after Jesus died and rose from the dead. So it's the the continuation of the story and we hear about how the early church how it grew after Jesus died and we meet some of the people that helped the church to grow and one of them was Paul. Now Paul was a very religious man and very devout in his Jewish faith so when he heard about Jesus saying that they were not observing their faith properly, they were not doing things right at all, he was not happy at all. But he never knew Jesus. It was afterwards as the church began to grow and more and more people learned about Jesus and they became Christians. They believed in Jesus. They listened to the disciples and they became Christians. Well, Paul was not very pleased about this and he said, I'm going to wipe those Christians out. I don't want my faith to change in any way at all. I think we're doing things right and he became what's called a persecutor. He was really horrible to the Christians. And he went along to the synagogue and he got letters to, that said that he could arrest any Christians he found and bring them back to put them in jail. And probably worse, some of them might have been killed. So he's on his way on the road to a place called Damascus. And Damascus, he had heard that there were some Christians meeting there. So he went with his people, with his supporters, and he's on the road and he's determined to get there and to get those Christians. And he's got the letters in his hand saying that he has the power to arrest them and bring them back and put them in prison. Well, as he was on his way, something happened. And the something that happened 
changed Paul forever. As he was riding along on his horse, suddenly there was the brightest light in the sky and it shot down straight into Paul's eyes. Now, you know when there's a very bright sunshine, you can't open your eyes, can you? You can't look at the sun. Well, it shone down and Paul couldn't see anything and he was so shocked that he fell to the ground. And as he fell to the ground, a voice said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you? Who are you? said Paul. I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. But rise and enter your city, and I will tell you what to do. Well, he lay on the ground, completely blinded, because even when the light had gone, even when the light had gone, he couldn't see anything at all. And the people with him couldn't understand what had happened at all. And they helped Paul up from the ground and they took him on into the city. Now, and he waited there. He couldn't do anything else. He didn't really know what had happened to him. But he suddenly thought, this Jesus... I think I believe in him. I think I've been doing the wrong thing. And he had a change of heart. He began to think that he should believe in Jesus and he shouldn't persecute him any more. But he couldn't do anything because he couldn't see. He couldn't see for three whole days. It must have been very scary. Now, in the city was a man, a disciple, a follower of Jesus called Ananias and he lived in Straight Street and he had a vision and the vision was Jesus telling him, Ananias, I've chosen you to do a special job for me. Oh yes, said Ananias. I'm so pleased to be chosen. I will do anything for you. Well, there is a man who comes from Tarsus. His name is Saul or Paul. You will have heard of him. I want you to go and I want you to put your hands on his eyes and to heal him because he cannot see at the moment. I have chosen you to do that job for me. Will you do that job for me? Well, Ananias was scared. At first, he'd been really pleased about being chosen. But when he knew that it was Saul, sometimes known as Paul, he'd heard all about him. He'd heard about the wicked and violent things he'd done to the Christians. And he said, oh, but Jesus... I'm too frightened. Couldn't you send somebody else who's braver than me? Jesus said, I have chosen you and you will be all right. Please, Ananias, get up and go and do as I ask. Well, Ananias got up and he went to the house where he'd been told Paul was waiting. He was very scared. And when he went in, he was surprised because he didn't find the ranting, angry Saul that he'd heard all about and he knew of. He found someone very quiet, very shocked, who said, I've made a terrible mistake and I have had a wonderful vision, a bright light and I heard the voice of Jesus and now I know what I was doing was wrong 
and I believe and I am going to be his very best disciple. I am going to go and I am going to tell people all about this Jesus. And Ananias touched his eyes and Paul could see once more. And Ananias went back home really, really surprised by what had happened to Saul, also known as Paul. And do you know, Paul did go and he met the other disciples. He went to Jerusalem and he said, I am a changed man. I want to join with you. I want to convert people to Christianity. I want to tell people all about Jesus. And I want them to believe just as I do. I was wrong and I'm very, very sorry. Well, what do you think the disciples thought? Do you think they thought, oh, isn't this wonderful that he's come to join us? No, they didn't. They thought it was a trick and they were really scared. And they didn't want anything to do with him. And some of them said, we'll have to kill him. He's come to get us. It's just all a plan and a plot. Well, some of the disciples had heard the story from Ananias. And they knew that Jesus had done an amazing thing on the road to Damascus. And they believed Paul but they were afraid that he would be killed by their own friends. So do you know what they did? They put him in a very, very large basket. The basket was as big as a person. And we know actually that Saul or Paul wasn't a very tall man. He was quite short, but they put him in the basket and around the city was a wall, the city wall with just one door. And they had a wall around the city to keep them safe. Sometimes you can go and see castle walls, now city walls, and you can walk round them. But these walls were there to keep the enemies away, people who came to attack. And so they got Paul in the basket with a big rope and they lowered the basket down over the wall. And he had to run away until they could convince the disciples that he really was telling the truth. And eventually they believed in Paul. And Paul went on a lot of missionary journeys. That means he went on journeys to other countries, other parts of the country, many, many journeys. And he is one of the main people in the book of Acts and you can read all about Saul known as Paul in the book of Acts and all the wonderful things he did. He was particularly the apostle who spread the word to the Gentiles, the people who weren't Jewish like Jesus because Jesus said my word, my message isn't just for Jewish people, it's for all people. And so Saul, also known as Paul, told many, many people all about Jesus. That's an amazing story, isn't it? It's one of my very favourites. Let's finish today by saying our school prayer together. This is our school. Let peace dwell here. Let the rooms be full of contentment. Let love abide here. Love of one another, love of mankind, love of life itself and love of God. Let us remember that as many hands build a house, so many hearts make a school. Amen. It's been lovely sharing that story. Some of you will remember it from last year. I hope you're doing your school work. I love seeing the school newsletter because I see some of you in the school newsletter. And I hope it won't be too long 
before we see each other again. Goodbye and God bless. Love you.